Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So today's video is going to be part five of my card making basics series. We're going to be talking about a focal point today. So let's go ahead and have a look. All right, a little bit like backgrounds. There is so many ways that you can make a focal point on your card. I have some examples to show you sort of as we go along. Uh, so I'm hoping I can sort of make this make sense. There is no rule that says you have to have a focal point. Your sentiment can be your focal point, but we're going to talk about sentiments next week because there's so many different ways to do sentiments. Um, today I'm focusing on sort of like that image, the hero image, where you can find a hero image and what you can use to make that image. So I'm hoping this will all make sense. Fingers crossed it does anyway. All right, so let's start off with the, I guess, the thing that I use the most for my focal images, and it's stamps. So I love stamps. I love stamps and dies. I love using them to make my make my focal points. And this is also where you make your focal point doesn't have to be one point. It can be multiple. So if you're doing like a scene card, you can obviously do that as well. And I have a scene card example to show you in just a second. So here are a couple of my favorites. Not necessarily these ones are my favorites, but these kind of ones. Uh, so you guys know I have a bit of a thing with Lawn Fawn. I love their little critters. This is just an example of, of one using a Lawn Fawn one. This is from Berry Rainy Day. It's such a simple card, but that focal image is really where you're looking. You're looking at this. So easy to do. And I'm going to do another video on colouring and mediums and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that one. In, it's still coming in this series. Um, so that's sort of the easy one is just a stamp. And you can also use these as backgrounds. I said that last time. Like You don't have to use the, the stamps just as... The focal point, you can use them to make backgrounds as well by repeating and stuff like that. So that's where these are really, really handy. Uh, the other ones I really love, I love Uniquely Creative Stamps. This butterfly one is actually one of my favourites. looks awesome on vellum with like then our background. You can do multiples again. And when I'm talking multiples and scene multiples, this is what I'm talking about. It's a, it's a busy card, but there are focal points. So you actually sort of look at lots of different things. And I love making scene cards for this reason. You can sort of put so much detail into them. I love this one. This is a uniquely creative one. Um, but yeah, just you can use the little critters to make just the most gorgeous, gorgeous things. Uh, other ones that I then love to use are layering stamps that do florals. So these are two that I love. This is Gina K Designs Perfect Poinsettia. And this is the Build a Flower Coral Charm. Yes. And this is sort of what you can get using those flowers. So the background's very simple, the sentiment's very simple, but it's the flower that pops. So it's that's your focal point, that's where you're going. And each of these have been done, or well, these two have kind of been done in the same way. These are all coloured with Copics. This is just stamping. So you can build yourself a sentiment without having to use markers or colouring in or anything like that. Um, just another couple of quick examples sort of when it comes to stamping and those sort of things. Um, this one's using a Hero Arts kit, this is using Uniquely Creative. One image, one background, one sentiment, bingo. It's it's It can be that easy. You don't have to do the complicated scene cards. You can do something really simple with one of these. And I actually really love doing these. I did Ryan's birthday card actually very similar to something like this with a different set. So very easy to do. Uh, the other thing you can use is using die cuts. So for those ones that we use dies to kind of build things up, I've got a couple of examples. This is one of my favourites ones. This is the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit from November 2021. And you get this sort of build a critter kind of thing. And what it does is it builds things like this. It comes actually in a, you get a, a Santa, a reindeer, an elf or a snowman. I just love the little elves. I think they're gorgeous. And that's all cut out. So the focal image is all cut out of cardstock as opposed to being stamped and coloured. So it's just another way to do it. Something else that I love to do, which is new, it's a it's a new love. I haven't done it all that much. Um, these are the Sizzix, what are they called here? Thinlets Wildflowers 2 um, dies. So I'm using them to kind of use up some of my scraps or use up some of my inked up papers. You can cut these sort of things out of it and you can get very simple kind of flat focal points as opposed to something that's been stamped out um, differently. So it's just something simple like that. So that's using dies as the actual thing, I guess, that's there. There are so many different ones on the markets. You can get flower dies, you can get critter dies, you can get um, building dies, and we can do sentiment dies as well, which we're going to talk about, like I said, a bit next week. The very last thing, 
And this is a quick er video because I feel like if I sit here going through each of them, we're sort of going to then end up into the colouring and then into the thing, and then it's sort of going to end up being a really, really long video. But I'm just showing you different things that you can use to make that big focal point. There are obviously, like I said, so many others, so just keep that in mind. Um, the last thing is, oh, actually I've got two, sorry, is the next one is die cuts, and it's one that I probably use um, not quite as much as using the stamps and dies, but pretty close. So these are where you've already got your pre-printed, I guess is the right word, uh, image. It's already cut out for you, and you can basically just stick it down on your card or use it to build up a scene using the different die cuts. So you guys know I love Planners Anonymous ones. I use them all the time. Um, I also get a bunch from Uniquely Creative from time to time. These are the Mind Over Matter ones. And just to sort of show you, like, we see Uniquely Creative, um, sorry, Planners Anonymous ones all the time. But you got different things in here. I also get them from Kaiser Craft. Some of them have sentiments on them, like these birthday wishes. Some of them are those sort of floral. Some of them are the um, little butterflies. So you could easily make, like, a little scene here on a very simple, maybe inked background or something like that. You could put those in there. Put your mushroom, put your flower, put your sentiment. I'm just trying to sort of build this up a little bit. Put your critter. Bingo. Like, it, it can be that simple. And that's where die cuts are fantastic because they're already pre-cut and coloured for you. You don't have to you don't have to work out your colour combinations, which can be sort of the hardest part sometimes of working out what you want to do colour-wise. Because they're already coloured, you can make your background to match these colours and go from there. Uh, other one that I think people forget are places like Kiki K and Kaiser Craft. Kaiser Craft do beautiful die cuts with basically every collection they release. Uh, but these ones were some mini card cutouts that came from Kiki K. Think about too what you get in your paper lovers books because they are really good too. These ones have got like watermelons and unicorns. And the other thing, like, this is this is why I love doing these videos. I'm seriously sitting here going, oh, I've got an idea for a card that I can make using this. Um, but think also about sticker books. Sticker books can be, you can either make stickers um, into dies, so you can like, put them on a piece of cardstock and cut them out, or you can just stick them straight down. You can use stickers just as easily. So keep that part in mind as well. You don't have to necessarily just use die cuts. You can use stickers as well that do the same thing. And just as, as an example, this was a card I made using the, this was... Oh, what's it called? I think it was Whale Song uh, with the mermaid. She's the focal point behind, like in front of the shaker card. You've got your very simple sentiment and there, and there you go. The last thing you can use, and I don't have an example of it so much, but is using just pa like paper that you can buy and then cut them out. So these become your die cuts. So I just had to have a bit of a sneezing fit, and in that I actually found my example. Uh, so this is the little flip book that I was making for Charlotte. That's a die cut, like that's a piece of cardstock that I've cut the shape out of. The same thing with all of the balloons. Whether it's a 12 by 12 or a 6 by 6 most of the paper packs you buy are going to have something that you can cut up. These would be beautiful. This little guy here, cut out and stuck on a card with a very, well, a very simple welcome baby or hello baby, or something like that, like... You could cut that out, put that on here. You could just one piece of paper. Bingo. That's how easy having just a focal point can be. You don't have to go over the top. You can be very simple with them as well as being complicated. So there we go. That's sort of the focal image part of my card making basics. Again, so much more information that I could go into. If you want more info on any particular part of this, please let me know. Um, I can then sort of expand. We can do a card advanced card making or a card making in depth or something like that. The next one we're going to talk about is actually adhering it all together. So the different kinds of adhesives that I like to use and why certain ones are different. We're then going to go into the colouring mediums and then we're going to go into the last but not least which is the nice to have. So we don't have to have them but they do certainly make life a little bit easier. So three more videos to go in this series if you are interested in the ones I've already done. They are all listed down below and you can go and check those videos out or just jump on the playlist because they're all there for you. So make sure you don't miss the next one. Make sure you subscribe and you can also follow me on social media as well. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you have an awesome day and I will catch you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.